Well, if you can't tell by the way I dress and all the references to it that Sarah and I drop, I may be a huge Friends fan. It's one of my happy shows. I watched it first run from 94 to 2004, and believe me, I've gone back to revisit it several times since. So naturally, like most Friends fans, we were looking forward to the spin-off series, Joey, which lasted two seasons from 2004 to 2006. I haven't seen this show since it first aired 12 plus years ago, and I remember kind of being okay with it at first, but then just giving up towards the end of the first season. So let's see how it holds up! Okay, for a pilot? I actually had a lot of genuine laughs in this. The joke about Joey forgetting he had a layover in Dallas, asking if his nephew confused his haircut sheet with a cape. Matt LeBlanc has brilliant comedic timing, and he can get a laugh out of me from either the dumbest joke or just a simple expression. There's funny references in this to friends, like his sister Gina thinking Chandler and Joey were a gay couple, or a reference to the fact that Joey doesn't like to share food. Friends had a lot of great moments with the ridiculous stuff Joey Tribbiani would be cast in, like Mac and Cheese, where he was partnered with a robot. And I laughed a lot here when Joey was cast on a really violent cop show, or when he's auditioning to be an anchor for an entertainment news show. With how depressed Joey was about Monica and Chandler moving outside the city, it seems weird that Joey would leave his job on Days of Our Lives to move to L.A., but they do kind of address that here with Joey talking about how he wants to give change a shot. I kind of have a feeling of what I'm going to say as this show goes along, but I will say this. In just this one episode, I laughed a million times more here than I did in two seasons of Fuller House. In case you don't know the plot of Joey, Joey Tribbiani moves to L.A. where his sister Gina lives, and she's played by Dre De Mateo, who's basically still Adriana from The Sopranos, but in a sitcom universe. He becomes roommates with his nephew Michael, who's basically an 18-year-old diet Ross Geller, so Joey has to teach Michael how to hit on women. But there's some weird stuff, like how Gina is so protective of him that she sneaks into the apartment and still sleeps in his room at night. Andrea Anders plays Alex, the sexy lawyer, who is also married, plus she's the building superintendent, and she and Joey are the will-they-won't-they they of the series. Whatever. I'm already kind of tired of this. Two episodes in. There is a funny moment where Joey breaks a chair. I like seeing what he took from his old apartment in New York, such as the Magna Doodle that's still on the wall, plus the Scarface poster. It makes me wish I was still watching Friends. And they said none of the other friends popped up on here. Hugsy was in this episode. It opens with Joey playing video games with Hugsy. That part was cute. Joey throws a house party so he can meet new friends, and a lot of the supporting characters have really settled into their stereotypes here. Michael is the two-dimensional geeky guy, so much so to where all of his back and forths with people are all, Michael says something smart, and then another character cuts him off by going, Okay, we're done here, or la 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 la, alright, you lost me. That happens a lot in this episode, just in the first few minutes. I know they did that with Ross Geller, but that's not all they did with Ross. In the first few episodes of Friends, Ross was already shown to be dealing with depression and grief and jealousy because he was a person. Michael is such a stereotype that he belongs on the Big Bang Theory, and sure enough, one of the party guests is Simon Helberg, playing a guy who lives with his grandmother and thinks that Michael's date is a robot. And I would still rather watch this than the Big Bang Theory. Joey joins Michael's book club, but is dating two of the women in it, and Michael's crush has a crush on Joey. <laughs> what? 
It's an episode that just makes me wish I was watching the Friends episode where Rachel and Phoebe join that book class and Rachel doesn't read any of the books and has to cheat. I'm still getting some laughs out of the Joey character because I love Joey Tribbiani, but they just have Michael screeching his lines as if they're asking themselves, what would Ross do in this situation without actually developing him as a three-dimensional character? There needs to be way more of Joey auditioning for or acting in bizarre TV series, because so far, that's only been in the pilot. I like Dre De Mateo as Gina. Not that the character is hilarious, but she does bring a lot of energy to the role, especially since it's just written as the stereotypical Italian mom who's creepily too close to her son. These supporting characters are just archetypes, and that's it. Joey Tribbiani had 10 years of establishment, but these characters haven't, yet they're written as if they have. And that's not a good thing, because I don't know them. Well, David Schwimmer directed this episode, so it's kind of like Ross is there. You just can't see him. This is one of the better episodes so far. Joey takes a job as an understudy on three different plays, but then has to act in all three of them on the same day. That's what this show really should have been focusing way more on, the things that Joey has to act in. The resolution of this plot is really funny when Joey mixes up Richard III for a cowboy musical. Although in one scene Joey says that he's never lived alone before, which clearly he has, he moved out on his own the first time he played Dr. Drake Ramore on Days of Our Lives, plus he briefly lived by himself when Chandler moved in with Monica just before Elle McPherson moved in with him. I would ask if the people who made this have even seen Friends, but David Schwimmer directed it. This is another episode that's pretty good, and again, it has to do with Joey's acting career. But even the Gina plotline that has to do with her dating a guy who likes losing fingers played by Josh Randall from Ed, that's good too. Bob Odenkirk plays a fellow actor who keeps sabotaging Joey at all of his auditions, and watching it, I'm thinking that this could have been one of the many things that this whole series should have been about. Bob Odenkirk and Matt LeBlanc playing competing actors. They have very good chemistry together. Speaking of chemistry, Matt LeBlanc also has good chemistry with Jennifer Coolidge, who plays his agent, and not the former friend of Monica and Phoebe's who had the fake British accent. Joey and Gina also have great chemistry together, way more than he and Alex do, who isn't even in this episode. It feels like Joey and Gina should have been rewritten as a couple instead of siblings. It's weird that they're better together than his actual will-they-won't-they -they love interest. Seven episodes in, I realize this show definitely needs an arc. By this point in Friends, we had things like Rachel transitioning into having a job and not being dependent on her parents, and Ross finding out he's going to be a father and also being in love with Rachel. In Joey, it's just things happening and none of it really matters. Yeah, he seems to have a crush on Alex, but that's it really, just a minor crush. It never really seems like he thinks about her all that much when she's not there. Plus, her husband comes back in this episode and he's played by Matt Letcher. He's the reverse Flash. Joey really shouldn't mess with that. And the boss at Gina's hair salon is for some reason played by Peter Stormare, so I'm just assuming there's a snuff film racket going on in the basement. See, it's forcing me to make up my own story arcs now. Ah, the first two-part episode of the series. <laughs> this show doesn't have enough story to earn a to-be-continued episode. Kelly Preston guest stars as a woman Joey has had feelings for for decades, but then when the two of them start dating, she has to decide whether she wants to keep seeing Joey or get back together with her estranged husband. That was way more interesting when it was Chandler, Janice, and the Mattress King. Plus, something tells me Joey and Alex are also going to deal with a plotline like this. But speaking of Chandler, it was nice of him to guest star in this episode. On a picture that sat on an end table. What's gonna happen in the second part? Is the love interest that's only on two episodes only gonna be on two episodes? 
Kelly Preston and Joey don't end up together. This really needed to be 40 minutes. Jokes here totally stand the test of time. There's a reference to those Terry Hatcher, Howie Long commercials. I forgot those were a thing! The episode has to do with Joey trying to win over Kelly Preston, and at one point he says he's never had to fight for a girl before. Oh, <laughs> the Friends episode where Ross and Joey fight for the attention of Gabrielle Union would beg to differ. There's one very minor character in this series that kind of works, and that's Ben Falcone as Howard, a Joey Tribbiani superfan. So if the series were Joey Tribbiani and Bob Odenkirk as competing actors in New York, not L.A., and Joey had a stalker played by Ben Falcone, way better series! Okay, so it's an episode that's back to being about Joey and his acting career, so it's actually pretty funny. From the beginning, it got a big laugh out of me when Jennifer Coolidge told Joey she wanted to put him in a diaper and nurse him. Joey has to pretend to be from Northwestern University in order to get an audition, and he's auditioning for the role of the father of a 20-something-year-old girl, and the two actors end up sleeping together beforehand, so when it actually gets to the audition, it becomes really incestuous and actually pretty funny. I could have seen this plot working pretty well on Friends, too. By the end of the episode, Joey gets the role on the TV series, and for the first time on this show, I'm actually curious as to where the next episode is going. This episode's not bad either. <laughs> To promote his new series, Deep Powder, Joey has to be a celebrity judge at a Vegas beauty pageant, and Michael is actually interesting for once when it turns out he frequently goes to Vegas to count cards. But more importantly, I guess every series I end up doing on here is going to have a guest appearance by Bob Saget, because that happens here. Not only that, but the casino pit boss is Bobby Bacala, so when they get caught at the end, at least Silvio didn't show up to take Gina and the rest of them to the woods. By the way, when Joey speaks with a fake southern accent, clearly it should sound like a Jamaican accent. We see some of Deep Powder, which is this ski resort mystery action series that seems like Baywatch on ski slopes. This is how Joey should have began, with Joey coming to L.A. because he gets cast on this series. Then the show would immediately have an arc, and a much more realistic reason as to why Joey left Days of Our Lives and his friends to move to L.A. Lucy Liu plays the executive producer of Deep Powder, and Lucy Liu in something where Matt LeBlanc plays an actor? I feel like I've seen this movie before. And that it's gonna end with Matt LeBlanc screaming Salazar to the sky. There's a good twist on the Friends plot line when Dr. Drake Ramore was killed off because Joey did some bad press. And it's nice that this show actually feels like it's going somewhere. I am really tired, though. <laughs> Joey's in trouble because the actress that he's sleeping with locked herself in her dressing room, but more importantly, Gina is mad because Alex may have made a more delicious lasagna than her. There's jokes about Gina losing her nail in the lasagna, and let me just check my friends till the end commemorative guide, and yes, that definitely reminds me of when Monica lost her nail in the quiche. This could all be solved very quickly. Just take the spare lasagna that Monica gave to Paolo. We all know that Monica is the better cook. That's right, I'm making a lot of Friends references. There are some pretty funny one-liners here, including Joey talking about kicking a bear that was on set. Plus, there's even some good jokes at the expense of the lasagna story being stupid, like when Michael asks, doesn't anyone here have a job? Or Joey asking his boss if he can take three hours off the set to judge a lasagna competition. I kinda want lasagna now. The last few episodes have been setting up Lucy Liu's boss character as Joey's love interest, and in this episode, they have their first kiss! Lucy Liu's character trait is that she has OCD, so she washes her hands a lot and likes knocking on walls. 
<laughs> That's about it. The best gags here are the guest roles. Joey has to set Alex, Michael, and Gina up on dates for the premiere of his show. So there's some funny stuff involving Nat Faxon and Jeff Davis from Whose Line Is It Anyway, who plays Lucy Liu's ex. Also, Beth Littleford is a lesbian. There's a girl who likes Michael, but since he's a geek, he doesn't want to talk to the girl. Instead, he just wants to bug Brent Spiner, who is also at the party. You know, now that I say that out loud, I could see why someone would do that. Joey's gotten so busy that he needs an assistant, and it'd be really weird if this episode crossed over into the alternate universe Friends episode, and he hired Chandler as his assistant. My mind would be blown. They avoid the whole Joey hires a hot girl plotline, and instead Richard Rucolo is hired, which is good because not enough respect is given to Pete from Two Guys a Girl in a Pizza Place. The side plot is that Michael is fighting with his nerdy friend, again played by Simon Helberg, and God damn it, I'm not gonna watch The Big Bang Theory. It is weird seeing Helberg play a more Sheldon Coopery type, which means he's not funny. I am very upset, though, at the scene where Michael tells Joey to do a math problem in his head. That way he can act confused, because, uh, let me just check the guide here, and yep, that's already one of Joey's main acting techniques. With Joey being a guest on The Tonight Show, I really feel this should have been an episode where some of the other friends should have at least been mentioned. This is a huge milestone in Joey's career. Hell, even Mary Angela, the Tribbiani sister that Chandler made out with, got a mention. I do like the ongoing gag of Joey's agent Bobby hating deep powder and thinking it's an unintentional comedy, plus there's some funny bits where she keeps tasering herself in this. Joey's stuck in traffic before going on The Tonight Show, and I was really rooting for him to make it there on time. Plus, the episode reflects just how awkward it is whenever you give somebody the finger on the road and then you're stuck next to them in a traffic jam or a red light. Oh, and Antonio Sabato Jr. is in this episode. A fact I didn't know until his name popped up on the ending credits. I'm still very tired. This episode opens up timely with a Robert Blake joke. It's the Valentine's Day episode, and why the hell did I have a fancy dinner with my girlfriend when we could have just been sitting at home watching Joey? The episode kind of goes hand in hand with the Friends episodes where Joey was worried about saying something embarrassing in an interview. He begins dating a woman who's interviewing him for People magazine, but she turns out to be crazy. Although apparently the only reason she's crazy is that she's over 34. And where the hell is Lucy Liu? Last time we saw her, she and Joey were kissing, but she hasn't even been referenced since. I'm really worried about this show's lack of commitment to plot lines. Joey gets nominated for a Daytime Soap Award, and I forgot how much I missed the cheesy soap opera scenes that Joey used to do on Friends. His Days of Our Lives death scene has him getting stabbed while performing an operation, and then saying, I need 20 cc's of betrayal. That's how I want to go out. He accidentally reads the wrong name while giving out an award, and there is a very sweet subplot involving Julia Duffy as the aging actress who was supposed to get the award. And as a Newhart fan, I just really liked seeing Julia Duffy again. Speaking of underrated, Sam from Battlestar Galactica is in this as a soap opera star, and I'd really like to see him in better things. The last thing I saw him in was The Bye Bye Man. Oh yeah, and Michael's subplot is that he's trying to do one sit-up. You know, because he's nerdy! Well, Glenn the Assistant is back, which is surprising. Even though he and Gina are technically still dating, he was barely mentioned in the last few episodes. I just figured he'd go by the wayside like Lucy Liu. Seriously, where the hell is Lucy Liu on this series? Christina Ricci guest stars as the fancy Tribbiani sister. She plays Mary Teresa, the one on Friends who Chandler kissed, thinking it was Mary Angela. I don't remember her being that fancy. In fact, she doesn't act like a Tribbiani at all. She acts like a spoiled rich girl, which makes her way more like Reese Witherspoon when she played one of Rachel Green's sisters. On Friends, all the Tribbiani siblings looked alike, to the point to where no one could tell them apart. Matt LeBlanc, Drea DeMatteo, and Christina Ricci 
wouldn't even be believable as second cousins. We are not amused. Alex's husband is back again, and I think there may be problems in their relationship, almost like she and Joey are probably going to end up together at some point. Better hurry, though, because now he's in a relationship with his photographer neighbor Sarah, played by Mad Jenna Mick. Not gonna lie, I was really distracted in this episode. Laura and I have been eating from this candy buffet, and they tape the damn things on here so tight that I was fighting with it for about 10 minutes, to the point to where I had to get some scissors to cut the candy off of it, and by the time I got it off of there, half of the candy bar was melted by my hands. So, Alex and her husband are separated. That was fast. Probably for the best, though, because, again, he's far too busy being Reverse Flash. That's not the only breakup here. Gina and Glenn the assistant breakup, which I guess means that he also quit his job because, according to IMDb, he's never seen again. On the plus side, Joey and Sarah decide to make things official. They actually have pretty good chemistry together, and there's a funny part where he takes her to the bedroom along with a meatloaf. Plus, it's hard to get upset at any episode that also has Hugsy in it. Things seem to be going okay with Joey and Sarah's relationship so far, even though he is worried that he'll end up sleeping with Carmen Electra because the two of them have a love scene in Deep Powder. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. I guess Lucy Lou quit her job just like Glenn quit his job as Joey's assistant because she wasn't there on set. With Alex's separation from her husband Eric being a little more dramatic, I do like episodes that really show Joey's sweet side, like he really is a good dude who is always there for the people he cares about. That's kind of why I didn't mind the Joey-Rachel relationship. I thought it was good character growth for Joey, and even though Ross and Rachel were the natural ending for that series, Joey was a lot sweeter to her than Ross was. There is a really funny moment in this episode when Joey thinks that Eric slept with his own mother, so this show does seem to nail incest jokes. It's the season finale, so it's part one of a two-parter. Joey is in love with Sarah, but she's offered a job in Washington, D.C. and may need to move. Isn't it a little early in the series to be doing this cliche? It was in the final season of Friends when Rachel almost moved to France. Couldn't Joey have at least waited until past season one? Michael does have a girlfriend in this episode, though, only she's 45 years old, which makes his mother very uncomfortable. It's okay, they can go on double dates with Frank Jr. and Alice. The episode ends with Joey getting Sarah to stay by asking her to move in with him. I see this ending well. It didn't end well. Now Mad Chin and Mick can hang out in a boat in purgatory alongside Glenn the Assistant and Lucy Liu. Nat Faxon shows up again, and between him and an arrogant deep powder actor named Gunner, these two really should have been main supporting actors on the show. They're really funny. Instead, they're only in about two or three episodes. Bobby the manager also has some funny moments in the finale when her weird, creepy infatuation with Michael causes a confrontation with Gina. Bobby's Michael crush was present in the previous episodes, and the whole time I was always thinking, why doesn't Michael just go for it? Friends was always known as having memorable season finale cliffhangers, so what's Joey's season one cliffhanger? He and Alex kiss, which is something we all predicted. It doesn't exactly make me anxious to find out what happens on season two. The show isn't bad. I did laugh quite a bit in it, but the problem is is that 90% of the time, it was just Joey Tribbiani that I was laughing at. No one else here is all that interesting. It's a wildly unambitious show, and feels pretty lazy. The only idea they had was to take Joey Tribbiani and simply move him to California and do the same type of jokes, only with far less interesting people. There's about 10 good episodes and a lot of filler. 
It needed to start out with an arc, like Joey is already cast on Deep Powder, which gets picked up to a full series. He was on that cop pilot in the first episode, but it seems really silly that he'd move out to L.A. for that, when he could have just gone there, shot the pilot, and then flown back to New York. Plus, he was so upset about Monica and Chandler moving away, but Mike and Phoebe and Ross and Rachel are still there. If they're gonna move him there, it would have made much more sense if he was already on an established show in LA. A lot of things could have been done differently. Dre De Mateo, for one, should have been rewritten as a love interest instead of his sister. And it should have primarily focused on Joey and his work. Hell, it could have even stayed in New York and just focused on Joey's jobs. Like if every season maybe had a different revolving door supporting cast and focused on a different TV project or play that Joey was cast in. They could have gotten a lot of mileage out of cheesy TV productions and not episodes devoted to a lasagna contest or Michael doing chin-ups. Joey was already sliding in the ratings in season one, so did they make some changes to season two to make it rise above simply being okay? <laughs> Well, it was cancelled in Season 2, so let's see. And stay tuned for the next episode, because we'll end it with a fan poll determining what show to watch next.